and gentlemen, it is that time. It is the second year that I'm doing the Oklahoma Weekly Matchup Show. If you're not familiar with it, each week, usually three or four days before the game, I will break down Oklahoma's upcoming matchup, and what we'll do, we'll have predictions and my four keys to the game. And then we'll have an OU post-game show either that Saturday or the following day in which we break down the game and I'll go over my four points in review. This week's opponent for Oklahoma should not be too difficult as they take on the Utah State Aggies. Oklahoma comes into this game as a 31-point favorite. The game will be Saturday night at Gaylord Memorial Stadium in Norman, 6 o'clock kick, and the game can be watched on pay-per-view. I'll explain this just like I did last year prior to Oklahoma's only pay-per-view game last year, which was against those horrible Idaho State Bengals. If you want to watch Oklahoma versus Utah State, you're going to have to shell out 40 bucks of your hard-earned money to Cox Cable. And you can only catch this game if you live in the greater Oklahoma City or Tulsa areas. If you do not have 40 bucks, simply put, Ask family or friends if they want to split the cost so that somebody can host the game. If you don't feel like doing that, go to a sports pub, bar, someplace that will have the game, and you can eat at their establishment. But if you don't feel like staying in an establishment for about four hours, then simply put, just listen to the game on the radio. It's free. And listen to Bob Berry Sr. and Merv Johnson. By the way, before we get into the report, if you didn't hear, this is the last year that Bob Berry Sr. will be broadcasting Oklahoma Athletics as he's giving up the mic after nearly 50 years. So Oklahoma play-by-play -play guy Bob Berry Sr. is retiring, had two different tenures with Oklahoma, one in the 60s, 70s, and the other one from the 90s onward, and he also broadcasted Oklahoma State Athletics in between those tenures. So statewide, nationwide, the guy's well-known, nearly 50 years of play-by-play, -play, and I will tell you this, play-by-play -play is not an easy business. Very well considering, too, that sometimes they put the uh, broadcasters way up high. You notice the stadiums are higher now, so it makes it even tougher to see the field. And sometimes they stick you in press boxes where they're located behind the end zones. And that's difficult because you don't get that side-to-side -side angle. So Bob Berry Sr. has done a good job throughout all these years. A familiar face is retiring. Bob Berry Sr., he's stepping down after this season. Hopefully he'll have a good retirement. Now... Let's talk about Utah State, and to tell you the truth, there's not a lot of X's and O's to break down in this game. There's a reason why Oklahoma is about a four-and-a-half touchdown favorite. Last year, though, it's kind of hard to rag Utah State as far as recent history because they improved. Two years ago, they were 2-10. and ten. Last year, they went 4-8. and eight. So, I guess if you're looking for a silver lining as far as things looking up, that might be one right there for the Aggies. They were coached by a guy by the name of Gary Anderson. Now, Anderson was a defensive coordinator for the Utah Utes back in the late 2000s. You might be saying, big deal. Well, in a way, you could see it as a big deal because in 2008, he was a defensive coordinator of that Utah team that finished second in the country and went undefeated and pasted Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. That led, of course, to Anderson getting the head coaching job at Utah State. Remember, he was a defensive coordinator there, but actually it's the offense that's the strength of this Aggie team. Um, in particular, they have a decent quarterback play as well. And last year, in the form of uh, DeAndre Burrell, a veteran coming back this season, a guy that's got a pretty good arm, doesn't do too bad of a job getting out of the pocket. But what kind of will hurt him this season is that the offensive line on a lot of spots is new, and Utah State is not known for terrific pass protection. That's where the defensive ends for Oklahoma, like Frank Alexander and Jeremy Beal, could have a pretty big day. So Burrell, despite being very talented, is going to see a lot of Oklahoma pressure come Saturday night. If that wasn't enough for Utah State, how about probably not having their leading rusher from a year ago in the form of Robert Turbin? Now, Turbin, during the offseason, suffered an ACL injury and they weren't sure if he was going to be ready in time for non-conference play. Utah State does expect to have Turbin ready for the Western Athletic Conference, but he's iffy as far as if he's going to play in this game. I'm sure that if Utah State um, had to make an educated guess right now, they probably won't play him because as important as it might be for the Aggies to have a good showing against the Sooners come Saturday night, they want to make sure that their leading rusher from a year ago is healthy for conference play. 
So if he can't go, then you got a guy by the name of Michael Smith, who's a speedy guy. He doesn't have, have the experience. He'll probably get the start for the Aggies. Last year, Utah State was 20th in the country in rushing yardage, and they were also 13th overall in total yardage, averaging a little more than 400 yards a game. But remember, most of that was against the Western Athletic Conference, which is a league not known for its defense. The only team with a decent defense in that conference is uh, Boise State. The rest of the defenses just aren't very good. Another thing to remember, too, even though I don't think there's a chance Utah State's going to win this game, they could make it interesting for a while. I know Texas A&M's defense is not very good, but last year, Utah State went into College Station and put a scare into the Aggies, losing the game 38-30 and having a shot at the end of that game with maybe a touchdown and a possible two-point conversion, but ran out of time. So... Even though that was a bad A&M defense, it goes to show you that Utah State can go into tough environments and they're not going to be intimidated by the crowd. That was indicative of last year's game at Call Station, even though they lost, but only lost by a touchdown. Defensively, Utah State, simply put, is not very good, especially up front. This is a game where Oklahoma should not only be able to run the ball well, but should be able to get plenty of quality playing time for as many backs as they can, naturally for DeWanko Murray and Calhoun, but also um, for a guy like uh, Brennan Clay as well. And from what I've heard, uh, Roy Finch was uh, uh, nicked up a little bit. So, And boy, you would really love it if Moses Madu hadn't gotten in trouble a few weeks ago with the uh, DUI. He's, by the way, been suspended for this game because you need to get as many reps as possible for those uh, running backs, and this game is a great opportunity to do that. So. I would not think this is one of those games where even though Landry Jones will throw, I don't think he's going to throw it like 40, 50 times. I think this is one of those games where Oklahoma is not going to reveal a whole lot on offense because you got Florida State coming up the following week. So this should be a pretty good game for Oklahoma's offense. Now, let's look at the four keys to the ball game. Key number one, of course, the quarterback, DeAndre Burrell. Get pressure on him early. Defensive ends make your impact felt right away. You can do that. Then you've got Utah State on the ropes early. So DeAndre Burrell, one key, you, and especially for the secondary two of Oklahoma, which has had to do some retooling. As we mentioned in Oklahoma's preview, you don't have Jonathan Nelson at the corner. They've moved him to strong safety. You still have Quentin Carter at free safety, but Proctor, who was the free safety a year ago, now will be backing up uh, Quentin Carter. So you got new corners coming up for Oklahoma, Nate Fleming and DeAndre Hurst. They will have to handle the speedy receivers of Utah State. Now, key number two, penalties. And I know BYU had a lot of penalties against Oklahoma last year. But Oklahoma had just as many penalties. I think had about 100 yards in penalties. So last year, for an Oklahoma squad coach under Bob Stoops, they were not very disciplined in the penalty area, especially against Texas and especially against BYU and last year's opener in Arlington. So I think if they commit over 80 yards in penalties in this game, it could be a sign of that yellow flag not going away. So... If you watch this game, make sure to monitor Oklahoma's penalty situation, especially up front with holding and the legal procedure, you know, stuff like that. Uh, key number three is uh, linebacker uh, Bobby Wagner. Now, Wagner for Utah State last year, he averaged um, about 11 tackles a game. He was all Western Athletic Conference um, leading tackler for Utah State. He comes back this year. So for the offensive linemen, some of them, whom last year might have played for Oklahoma but didn't get a lot of reps. Um, Got to keep an eye on this guy. He's a pretty good player for Utah State. And number four, and this is a big one, make sure to put this game away as soon as possible. Utah State's one of those teams that you can do that against because their defense, simply put, is not very good. And their offense, even though they've got some nice players on the whole, it's not a great offense at all. And again, many of those yards that they had last season was not against stellar competition. So you can put the game away, let's say middle of the third quarter, you get Landry Jones, you get DeMarco Murray, you get Jeremy Bill, you get Travis Lewis, you get them out of the game, you get some new guys in, some second teamers, maybe third teamers, get them as much PT as you can. That way it's valuable spirits down the road, and just as important, you get the starters out of the game so that they don't get hurt in the second half, and then all eyes on the Seminoles come September 11th. Now, final analysis, this is one of those games that if Oklahoma takes care of business, the issue should be decided with plenty of time left to play. 
The spread is 31 points. And I think Oklahoma will cover the spread. I have Oklahoma 48 and Utah State 14. Oklahoma to win the game easily. And I'm given those 31 points. So Oklahoma, unlike last year, should be able to start 2010 with a victory. And all eyes will be on FSU a week from Saturday. Final score I have again 48-14 Sooners with the easy win. Saturday night I will have my post-game show of Oklahoma-Utah State. We'll catch you next time. Boomer Sooner.